Hello, Murphy Daily here, written by Murphy with another book review. This is um, Six Armies in Normandy, From D-Day to the Liberation of Paris by John Keegan. This is a book that I've been meaning to read for more than two years. I finally finished it about a month ago, and it's not super fresh in my mind, but I really wanted to do a review for everyone. Um, history isn't my first language. It is basically my husband's first language, so he's the one that wanted me to read it. And um, I had read and done a video, book review, of The Face of Battle by John Keegan, which is my most popular video. So I'm like, well, give the people what they want. I should read this one. The thing is, this is a more history-ish book than The Face of Battle was. That book talked a lot about the experiences of the people during battle. This book talked a lot about the forces that were, talked a lot more about the forces that were moving. So it was not as psychological a book, so it was a little bit harder for me to read. It's hard for me to picture things in geography. My husband's really good at it. It's hard for me. So I paid attention to kind of who these people were mostly. The six armies in question were the American, Canadian, English, French, German, and Polish armies. Each of those armies are pretty different and um, they prepared for the war and experienced that part of the war in different ways. The American and the English and to the extent that they could, the others also assisted with actual Normandy, landing on Normandy. Um, the book does take, take us back to the planning that it all came together and it was not a foregone conclusion. There were a lot of people coming together to decide, should we do this, should we do that? And in the end, they did, as we know, do the big D-Day um, effort, which is one of the great stories of warfare. But they were not the only ones. And in fact, you know, so the American, the Canadian, and the English were the main people for D-Day, main armies for D-Day. Next on the list of six, that at least the way I wrote it down, is the French. And the French had a particular experience of fighting the Germans because they were um, occupied. So the way that they got together and were a resistance is different. The Polish, oh my gosh, the Polish were like kind of on the other side, were on the other side of the Germans, so that was a different perspective. They weren't involved in landing on the beach at Normandy at all, but they had a rough time of it. And, um, didn't come out so well at the end because those Russians, the Russians weren't mentioned at all. They were just separate, probably because uh, Keegan wrote this during the Cold War and didn't want to bring that up. But there's also the Germans. He did not neglect the Germans as part of this war. The different, it, it was kind of exciting because they, he was talking about, okay, this was happening and that was happening. and. And for a person that can visualize the map on, on the table, they would have really felt it. So if you're good at that, this is a great book. It really is. And Keegan is an excellent writer. Um, it was hard for me to picture because I don't have in my mind the motions of the war already memorized. But I did like hearing how they got together, how they planned it, and the feelings as it were, of all the different armies. There was one part that I will, that will stay with me forever in this book. There's one part 
that will stay with me forever. It is interesting that he did bring in the perspective of both sides. I mean, it really was mostly on the allies. But Germany was part of it too. And there was a part towards the end where they were coming down to the last gasp. And Rommel and Ruger were in the wilds running away from the army, going through the countryside, and they saw how destroyed Germany was. This was their Germany. This was why they were fighting. And it was in ruins. And they knew it. But Ruger happened to have a copy of Gone with the Wind. I love that he was reading. Of course he had a book. I would have had a book. So he had Gone with the Wind, which is a good book, a great book. And he had been reading it. And Gone with the Wind had a corollary that the South was also destroyed and in shambles. So Ruger was telling Rommel, this is not the first time this has happened. We're going to get over this. Germany will get over this. We will win and we will be stronger and it's going to be fine. So Ruger was actually using American history to encourage Rommel. Gone with the wind was his story that he took comfort from. <laughs> He took comfort from that. And that actually is what happened, right? It's a great book. It was a little hard for me to keep track of, but it was a good book. And I encourage you to read it if you're into history. It was beautiful. It was long. And John Keegan knows what he's doing. So this is a follow-up to my top video about the face of battle. These are the different armies that came together in one of the biggest battles the world has ever known. I enjoyed it. I'd love to know what you think. Let's keep the conversation going. <laughs>